What's going on my friends? I'm Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today we're gonna cover more confusing code terms. So a whole bunch of these have to do with like damp, wet, rainproof, waterproof, things like that. They're all kind of like weather-ish. So first one we have is damp. So let's go into the 2020 National Electrical Code and see uh, what damp means. It's gonna actually be in the L's for location because then there's damp location, wet location, dry location. So they just smash them all together. So a damp location is a location that is protected from weather and not subject to saturation with water or other liquids, but subject to moderate degrees of moisture. So a damp location might be, say you have like a, a covered patio and you have some receptacles outside on that patio. Well, that's a damp environment. I mean, just the dew in the morning, the moisture, things like that. Even if it rains, there's a bunch of precipitation. That environment is considered a damp environment. Things are gonna get a little bit moist, but they're not getting saturated and pounded with water. Which moves us to our next one, then what is a wet location? So a wet location defined by code is an installation underground or in concrete slabs or masonry in direct contact with the earth in locations subject to saturation with water or other liquids such as vehicle washing areas and in unprotected locations exposed to weather. So uh, like right outside, where something is going to get beat on, rain constantly, it's like something submersible, submersible pump, something like that, that's considered a wet location. Any conduit run underground, PVC, that entire environment is wet, the likelihood of water penetrating into that conduit is pretty high, so they consider that a wet environment because it could get saturated with water. Next up is going to be dry location. We can probably guess what this means, but it is a location not normally subject to dampness or wetness usually indoors. A location classified as dry may be temporarily subject to dampness or wetness, as in the case of a building under construction. All right, next we have rainproof. So a rainproof thing is something that is constructed, protected, or treated so as to prevent rain from interfering with the successful operation of the apparatus under specified test conditions. So it's just preventing it from interfering with its operation, not preventing it from entering. Then we have rain tight, very similar sounding, but rain tight is constructed or protected so that exposure to beating rain will not result in the entrance of water under specified test conditions. So uh, rain tight, just fully enclosed, so beating rain can't get in. Rain proof is uh, preventing rain from interfering with the operation of the device. Next we have watertight. So watertight is constructed so that moisture will not enter the enclosure under specified test conditions. So rain is one thing, water is another thing, just in general water for watertight, meaning moisture is not gonna penetrate. Uh, when you're talking about rainproof and, and rain tight, it's talking specifically about the conditions of rain. Next, we have weatherproof. So weatherproof is constructed or protected so that the exposure to the weather will not interfere with successful operation. So that could be blowing dust. It could be snow. It could be salt you know, from the ocean. It could be salty air. It could be rain, any of those things that are basically uh, exposed to the weather, to the elements. The next one that we have is one that we don't often talk about as much because it a, a, doesn't apply to the things that most electricians deal with, and that is ground fault protection of equipment. So when we talk about ground fault protection, a lot of times we're talking about a GFCI receptacle, something in a bathroom or near a sink or outdoor receptacles. Uh, if a person's standing near them and they plug something in, protecting them against a ground fault or, or uh, you know, a person getting introduced into an electrical circuit. That is ground fault protection for personnel. Ground fault protection for equipment is protecting a, a specific piece of equipment with a ground fault detector. So you can ground fault protect things that are really expensive that you don't want something bad to happen to. Um, whereas if you didn't ground fault protect that, it could experience a ground fault. It could still clear a breaker and trip, but it could also destroy the equipment. So a ground fault protector or a ground fault detector as they're sometimes called, is something that is going to detect whether a ground fault happens just like a GFCI device will for a person, but it has a lot lower tolerance so it can immediately trip and save the equipment. 
So ground fault protection of equipment is a system intended to provide protection of equipment from damaging line to ground fault currents by operating to cause a disconnecting means to open all ungrounded conductors of the faulted circuit. This protection is provided at current levels less than those required to protect conductors from damage through the operation of supply circuit overcurrent device. So uh, lower threshold than breakers. All right, the next three all kind of have something to do with each other uh, as well. Uh, the first term we're gonna have is labeled. So uh, a lot of people get listed, labeled, and identified mixed up. So labeled means equipment or materials to which has been attached a label, symbol, or other identifying mark of an organization that is acceptable to the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, it might be your inspector, your city, something like that. And concerned with the product evaluation that maintains periodic uh, inspection of production of labeled equipment and materials and by whose labeling the manufacturer indicates compliance with the appropriate standards or performance in a specified manner. So labeled does not mean listed. It doesn't have to go through UL or some kind of listing agency. It just has to be labeled. So something, uh, a label that can be applied to something is considered labeled. Now, technically you could take a marker and label something and that's labeled, but that's not acceptable to the authority having jurisdiction. So the final say is always gonna be the AHJ, your inspector defining what materials you can and can't install. Um, they can thumbs up, thumbs down, reject, fail, anything that they want. So something that is labeled is basically something that's manufactured and has a label affixed to it. Listed is the next term. Uh, listed equipment, materials, or services included in a list published by an organization that is acceptable to the AHJ and concerned with evaluation of products and services that maintains periodic inspections of production of listed equipment or materials or periodic evaluation of services and whose listing states that either the equipment, material, or services meets appropriate designated standards or has been tested and found suitable for a specific purpose. So there are listing agencies out there that will evaluate something and whether or not they've evaluated, they might, it may or may not make it on their list. So UL has a list, right? Of things that they evaluate, things that they give the thumbs up to and you get your little UL stamp on your label. <laughs> so there have been times in the past where uh, the whole Federal Pacific thing where they were they got they got their UL uh, rating taken away, but they kept printing UL on the stickers for years, just kept doing it, even though it wasn't listed. And then the company ended up having to close down, lawsuits, all of that kind of stuff, but they were lying to people. So things have to be listed. Not everything has to be listed, but there are certain things that code does require that be listed. All right, the last one that we have is identified. So identified, uh, means that you're putting something on something, they call it a name, essentially. You're IDing it, you're, you're calling it something, you're identifying it as something. So identified as applied to equipment, and you know, you might have a transformer. Well, it has to be identified uh, as to like the listing agency and all of that stuff. So um, certain things need to be identified on equipment but it just means recognizable as suitable for the specific purpose, function, use, environment, application, and so forth, where described in a particular code requirement. So there might be something that says that um, you have to have a listing uh, on a piece of equipment. It must be identified for its like voltage, for its KVA rating, for its horsepower, things like that. So um, it's also like the, the purpose of the equipment or the environment that you're able to install it in or all of those different things. So, uh, so the people doing identifying would be an authority having jurisdiction or they could be like the uh, UL, some kind of inspection agency, testing laboratory, something like that. But it doesn't mean the same thing as listing or as labeling. Those three terms kind of get thrown around a lot and they're confused. So hope that helps you. That was part five. Um, if you guys want me to keep going with these, I, this has got to be one of the most boring videos ever, but you guys seem to really like them. So leave some comments below. Let me know if you love them. Thank you so much for your attention. Love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.